Hey everybody, Dave here, Hidden Freedom, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to go over the top 10 reasons why I think that single individual dividend stocks are better than ETFs. In the previous video, I basically did a video on the top 10 reasons why I think that ETFs are better than single individual dividend stocks. I would highly recommend you take a look at that video and then kind of make a decision on which method is the best for you. Obviously, there's an inverse, there's pros and cons to either method. They're going to be in random order. There's not any waiting to the top 10 reasons. So if you're interested in seeing future videos like this, please go ahead and like and subscribe. Set that bell notification so you get notified when I send out a new video. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. Number one is no expense fees. With single individual stocks, there's no expense fees. So we log into Schwab here, and I've just got SCHD pulled up there. We can scroll down here. This ETF has an expense ratio of 0.06%. Well, guess what? If we go to individual stocks, none of these individual stocks in my, this is my portfolio, by the way, none of these stocks here have an expense ratio. And of course, I cannot uh, highlight all those lines. Uh, but individual stocks do not have an expense ratio. They're not managed uh, like an ETF is. So an ETF would basically, um, you know, if either it's managed or it's not managed, in either case, there's still overhead with ETF. And then they're going to charge you an expense ratio. In this case here, SCHD is 0.06%, which honestly is pretty darn low uh, for a dividend paying ETF here. So that is one benefit to having individual dividend stocks is you don't have to worry about expense ratios, even though um, I do think that this is a non-issue here at all. It's not going to cost you a lot of money. Even with a million dollar portfolio, it's not going to be a lot of money. You know, I mean, it does take time to manage individual stocks and individual holdings. So just think about that. Number two is opportunity to buy depressed stocks. So I'm just going to use Starbucks here as an example, right? The last several months there, it's been, you know, hanging around that 120 to 125 area. And then the, just the last three or four months there, it's been trading down and we're getting now down near 52 week low there. I think that was a 52 week low right there. So with individual stocks, you have an opportunity opportunistically to buy individual stocks that are depressed. And, you know, Starbucks is a good example. We can look at JP Morgan. That's another good example. Sold off today, had bad earnings. So there you go. It's depressed, right? It's only uh, actually probably made a 52-week uh, low today, as a matter of fact. So this is another pro to having individual stocks is you can buy depressed stocks. And uh, in an ETF, you cannot do that. Number three is more control on the dividend yield. So looking here at my portfolio, we scroll over the right over here. Every single one of these stocks here is got a dividend yield, right? So there's the yield right there. And guess what? You can tailor your portfolio by whatever individual stocks you put in your portfolio. If you want a higher yield, then you can stick higher yield stocks in your portfolio. Now, granted, I don't recommend chasing yield. OK, so people, you know, a lot of times get into REITs or they get into the high fly and uh, dividend stocks that have, you know, the 8 percent yields and all that stuff. And I'm not talking about ETS here. OK, um, you know, AT&T had a high yield until they, you know, obviously uh, did the spinoff and all that. And, you know, 3M's got a 4 percent there. So some people just chase those higher yields, but that could severely hurt your portfolio as well. But you have precise control in your portfolio. If you want to tailor a portfolio that can get around, you know, three and a half percent, then that is doable with some quality stocks. You cannot do that with an ETF. Number four, you have more control on the dividend Kager. So again, looking at my dividend portfolio here, here's the Kager. We got the one year, we got the three year the five-year and the 10-year Kager right there. If you are targeting, say, a 10% yield uh, over five years, then you could, you know, buy those stocks that have something that's higher than 10%. So this example here, Home Depot, um, you got AbbVie there, you got JP Morgan there. Um, there's another one there that's Microsoft that's very close to 10%. And you have to kind of go through all the dividend stocks. Um, you know, I don't have a lot of dividend stocks in, in my portfolio. Obviously, there's a lot more than that. But if you wanted to target and be real specific 
on what your five-year dividend CAGR is or 10-year dividend CAGR is, you have an opportunity to do that and build a portfolio based off of the five-year dividend CAGR. And you cannot do that with an ETF. Number five, you have more precise control on the beta. So uh, let's scroll over to the left over here because every stock has a beta. And we can kind of see the beta field here. So we got AT&T has got a beta of 0.68. We got Starbucks with a beta of 0.6. We have a uh, Southern company here, 0.52. Lower the beta, the less volatile it's gonna be. So if you wanna build a low beta portfolio, you can do that, all right? You cannot do that with an ETF. Uh, so all these utilities, here's Duke right here, very low beta. Um, obviously you don't wanna just build a portfolio with just straight you know, utility stocks, even though it's gonna be low beta. You really want to spread um, across all the sectors, which we'll talk about here in a second. But you have an opportunity here to build a portfolio based off of beta. The lower the beta, the less volatile the stock, uh, the portfolio is going to be. It'll hold up better in recession in most cases on a lower beta. But you will also underperform with lower beta stocks as well. The higher beta stocks should perform better in a market, in an up market. In addition to that, you can also beta rotate based off of beta as well. Cannot do that with an ETF. Number six, you have an opportunity here to base your portfolio on individual stocks uh, on when you get paid. So every stock has an X dividend date and a payout date or payout uh, date right here. So in this case here, if we go back here, we had T that had an X dividend date of today means you had to buy it by yesterday. We have CL there, which has an ex-dividend date of April 20th. And then you got the payouts date, uh, payouts down here. And based off of those, you can build a portfolio um, that you say you want to get paid equally in February, March, April, May, June, July, and, and through all those 12 months, you can kind of you know buy specific stocks that pay out in certain months, and you can tailor your portfolio that way. I don't recommend that, but it is possible to do that. And you can obviously see here that AbbVie pays out in February, May, August, and November. And then if you want to add you know, Johnson & Johnson in there, that pays out March, June, September, and December. Now you could take all, uh, you can add specific stocks in there that pay out in December, right? So you can build out December. You can buy specific stocks that pay out in November and you can build out November and you can do, do that for every single month to kind of equal them out if you want. I don't recommend it, but it is possible to do that. Some people do that. With an ETF, you're not gonna have that option. You're gonna get paid quarterly and that's pretty much it unless you get a, a monthly paying ETF, but most dividend paying ETFs pay quarterly. Number seven, you potentially have higher returns with individual stocks. And this is probably the biggest one. So go in here, look at my portfolio. You have an opportunity here, like we talked in a previous one, when stocks are down, or let's say you want to add a new dividend stock to your portfolio, you can buy it when it's depressed. Well, guess what? An ETF, you don't have that option. You're pretty much just going to do whatever they want you to do. And whatever the weighting is in that ETF, and they might not add more when the stock is down. So, you know, like ExxonMobil was in what, in the 50s, like two years ago or something like that. I know, um, I think Starbucks was back in the 50s uh, a few years back and whatnot. You had an opportunity to add more to that position, which ultimately you should outperform the ETF in that case. And that is probably the biggest pro for individual stocks, individual dividend stocks over an ETF is if you are correct in your analysis and your stock picking and when you add um, you know opportunistically you should outperform that etf now uh, i would say in most cases most people are probably not going to outperform the etf but you have a you have the opportunity to outperform the ETF and uh, in an ETF, you know, you know that you're just getting whatever the ETF gets. And now granted, you know, SCHD is very good. You could outperform it in my individual stock dividend portfolio here. You also have to have the weightings correct. You also have to have all the allocations across all the sectors correct as well and keep them very similar to what this is the SP 500 here. And obviously SCHD is heavy financials right now. So they do that for you. Individual stocks, that is 100% up to you when you add to one of those positions 
or when you add a new position in your portfolio on whether that's a good price or it's undervalued or it's sold off enough and it's at a 52 week low or it's at a five year low, that is up to you. And uh, guess what? There's nobody to blame if you underperform the market, but you or yourself. Number eight here, you have an opportunity to DCA into these stocks. You can turn the drip off on all the stocks. You can turn the drip on on all the stocks. You can turn the drip off on some of the stocks and then manually reinvest some of those dividends and back into certain stocks that are depressed or something like that. So you have all those, you have the freedom to do whatever you want to do with the drip. And then the DCA, which is dollar cost averaging, you can do that across all the stocks or you can, you know, obviously um, it's very difficult to do that in just a regular brokerage. M1 Finance is a little bit better for that, but you, it's that is pretty much 100% up to you. You want a DCA across all your stocks, then you're going to have to go on your broker. And if you have 10 grand or whatever like that, you're going to have to figure all that out on your own. Um, but when it comes to reinvest in the dividends, you have 100% control over which ones are turned on, which ones are turned off. And in certain brokers, um, they have like a pool for that as well. I want to say like uh, TD Ameritrade had that, Scott Trade had that. Some other brokers might have it where it kind of, all the dividends kind of pool in a, a separate like little bucket. And then from there, you can kind of assign a percentage to what stocks that money goes into and that's kind of cool a lot of brokers don't have that option as well like schwab for example it's either it's binary it's either on or it's off if it's off it just kind of goes in your cash bucket and then you have to reinvest it yourself with an etf you don't have that option it's either on or off for the entire etf number nine you have precise control on the sector allocation so go in here to look at my sector allocation this is for all my individual stocks here. This is not including the ETFs down here at the bottom. It's only the individual stocks at the top here, minus SPY. So we go back here. This is my allocation as we, you know, as we're looking at the portfolio right now. I'm heavy staples, obviously, because there's some great stocks in the staple sector. Um, things that you know of, right? Look at this here, Kimberly Clark. We got. Uh, Colgate Palmolive there. We got Procter & Gamble. We got Pepsi. These are great staples. And that's the reason why I'm over allocated in staples, even though the S&P 500 has staples at almost 6%. So uh, I do think that staples are um, a good way to go. They're, they should be, they should, they should hold up very well in a market decline. But you have precise control over this, right? You can add more materials, you can add more information technology, you can add more financials, you can add more healthcare and bring those allocations up. With an ETF, you are pretty much at the liberty of whatever's in that ETF and whatever rotation they happen to do. So this is called sector rotation. Um, you know, when certain sectors rotate or sell off, you could sell off the things that are um, over allocated or um, way up in profit and then you could dump some of those profits into the things that had sold off or underweighted. And then that should help you outperform the market, hopefully. Number 10 is real estate. So a lot of ETFs do not have any real estate. And partially the reason why they do that is because they're not qualified dividends. The only real estate stock I have here is Realty Income right there. And some ETFs will have that in there, but a lot of ETFs, dividend ETFs, will not have any real estate at all. And you really should have some real estate exposure, right? Real estate exposure over here, 2.8% in the SP 500. And I don't think SCHD has any real estate. So if you're an SCHD, for an example, you will have zero exposure to real estate. And I think everybody should have some real estate. So that is one pro for going to individual stocks is you will have the opportunity to put some REITs in your dividend portfolio. In this case here, I have realty income. Another good one would be Stag. Uh, Stag Industrials is another good one that I like. And I believe both of those pay monthly as well. So think about that. If you're gonna go individual stocks, make sure you add some real estate in there. And I would also say, if you're gonna go the ETF route, maybe you should think about adding a couple individual REITs in there as well, such as Realty Income or Stag or one of the ones that you like. Do not try to chase the yield there. Try to go with a super high quality REIT to supplement your ETF as well. 
So that rounds out the top 10 reasons why I think individual dividend stocks could be better than ETFs. Let me know down in the comments if you want to go single individual dividend stocks or you want to go dividend ETFs. I'd appreciate it. Leave a comment about that. Until next time, please go like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.